This video is sponsored by The Hero's Journal. It has been an interesting phenomenon in my life that I have always been motivated to do the work in certain video games. Many people feel that children today, they don't have a strong work ethic. They complain that kids don't have discipline. Everyone's easily distracted because we all have like a form of ADHD because of scrolling on our phones. And we don't show a persistence when encountering challenges. But those same people, when they play games, and for me, RPG games have always been my favorite. You become very willing to do the work. And a lot of the work in an RPG game is incredibly tedious, incredibly boring, sometimes very dense, like there's really a long tier of subtasks that you have to complete that will take you days or even weeks to complete. And yet somehow, doing all that stuff, which if you think about the action of it, isn't super motivating. You know, it doesn't sound super pleasurable inherently to click a bunch of buttons and do a bunch of stuff. The same people who find themselves being lazy in real life can be very motivated by video games. And in this video, I sort of want to get into the bottom of that and see if I can apply some form of gamification into my own life as a way to motivate myself to achieve my goals. What's the motivation behind this? If you've ever played an RPG, you'd know that the act of leveling up often requires you defeating like the same monsters over and over again. Or it might be that you have to like stare at a piece of ore and click on it until your character mines it and then you'll get some ore and then you wait for it to respawn and then you mine it again so that your mining level can get higher. I mean, this is insanely tedious stuff. And if you haven't wasted your youth with RPG games, even things like mobile games have a little bit of this. I hear Candy Crush and Angry Birds. There are components to those games where you just have to do redundant activities over and over again. And this is appropriately called grinding. Anyone who's played a decent amount of video games would know that grinding is like a part of the culture of RPGs. And I love the philosophical message of RPGs so much that even today, I sometimes will play a really quick RPG, like there's one called Stick RPG, where you're literally just a stick dude who has to level up strength, charisma, and just make money. You do this by fighting people, getting drunk, like learning and getting a better job, increasing your intelligence. And of course, like the best way to make money, which is dealing drugs. I just sometimes run through a really fast version of that game to tell myself, oh, if you do more grind activities, you level up and you become better and life becomes better. When it came to things like fitness, chores, studying chemistry in college, I couldn't get myself to do the grunt work. I couldn't get myself to grind. But when it comes to stick RPG, I'm willing to drink to level up my charisma. Why is this? Because it's exciting to level up your character. You wanna get that plus five strength and gain a new skill and be able to wield the long sword and finish the quest. There's a sense of accomplishment and a use of your creativity and strategy to develop your resources and basically like increase your status within the game. These feelings are so satisfying that anything that stands in the way, be it grunt work or otherwise, we're willing to do it. In fact, there'd be so many times when I'd be playing Pokemon or RuneScape that I actually really love the grind. There was one experience, there was just a week of my life at age 13, where I wanted to get my fishing as high as possible in RuneScape. And so I went to Edgeville, which is right above the Barbarian Village to the west of Varrock, where I just went down to Barbarian Village and would fish for salmon. And I was fishing for salmon, and then my inventory would fill up, and then I would go back up to Edgeville, put the salmon in the bank, and come back down, and I did it just for like a week straight. And I got my fishing up to like level 70. It should have been so boring. It was boring. I I don't know why I did it. There was of course a tremendous sense of satisfaction once I got my fishing that high. But unfortunately when you play a game, you do tend to get this sinking feeling that you're wasting your time because you know it's just like the matrix. You're working and toiling towards something that isn't real. Like fishing in RuneScape is not a real thing. I could understand even then that instead of fishing on RuneScape, if I were to actually grind in real life, I would become super dope. Good things would happen. Now, can we imagine a way where there's no difference between the motivation we sometimes feel while grinding in a game and the motivation we could feel in life? Like what if it were possible to gamify your life to a degree where you wake up excited and you're excited and motivated to do the grind work? That's what I wanna uncover in this video and I came up with four strategies about how to gamify your life sufficiently so that grind activities and progress towards your goals is fun, like gamified fun. And so here's how I'm attempting this. The first thing is that you should know emotionally the experience you're chasing from that level up. I guess you need to get clarity on the objective. It's a strange thing that a lot of people who consume personal development content on a regular basis, you probably have some general loose goal, but it isn't often that we are regularly emotionally connected to that goal. Whereas with a video game, knowing what the target is I mean, it's very apparent because you can just like read some Wikipedia article about 
how to get that thing or the work required to get that thing. There's enormous clarity around the task and the goal and what it would look like concretely. I'm embarrassed to tell you all of the items of successes in video games that I found very motivating back in the day, but I was very emotionally charged about those goals. In RuneScape, I once saw someone wearing Ceridoman trimmed rune armor and having a dragon longsword, and I wanted that. I wanted the Ceridoman armor. It was crazy expensive, so it would probably take me a year worth of runescaping to save up the money to get the Ceridoman armor. Plus, in order to wield a dragon longsword, I would have to finish a particular quest. But just the idea of being able to wear that armor and having that sword and looking really cool in the game, I found it stupidly motivating when I was like 13, 12, 28. In Neopets, getting a pirate loop and a Moroccan Drake was like something I really wanted. I saw those things. I saw a loop with like the pirate thing and you look kind of angry. I was like, that's me. Like that's the animal version of me and I need that. You see, there was always a swashbuckling piratey sentiment in my soul that I needed to capture. And now I've captured it with this channel. But in order to afford those paintbrushes and you know save up for a Drake egg, I would have to make a lot of Neo points, which means I would have to like develop my skills in like running a shop and different aspects of RuneScapes to become more talented at it. In Pokemon, and I know you know this reference, when I first saw a Tyranitar and Tyranitar was like introduced, I knew that getting a Tyranitar was my life purpose. And it's really hard. It's a sufficiently elevated challenge. You have to get to the end of the game. You have to get all 16 badges. You have to go up Mount Silver and it takes a while to catch a Larvitar. And then you have to run around in the tall grass, murdering Pokemon until your Larvitar evolves at level 55. Like you can see, I've really wasted my youth. These are all fake goals, but they were emotionally charging. And your own goals need to be defined and clarified with that same level of charge. Like you should get as much clarity on your target as you can, whatever the target might be. So if your goal is to make six figures, like six figures a year, which for the longest of time I saw as this thing, if I got to six figures a year, like I would never have a problem again. But I didn't know what like my lifestyle would look like at six figures or what career could get me there. I didn't know the path to that just bubble of a thing. It was just an etheric goal, but you should ideally be able to look closely, understand deeply what that goal would feel like, what the experience of that goal would feel like. It should be just hard to achieve where you think, damn, I have to actually go for this. I have to really put in the time on this because the target is so long. I have to become used to doing grind activities for it and yet it's still achievable and exhilarating. As a smaller point to this first step, I found vision boards to be helpful to look at images that I find very compelling. And I use a few different work OSs for different categories of my life. And I have Microsoft OneNote that's entirely dedicated to what I call my commonplace book where I have my life philosophy. But a big portion of my OneNote is devoted to just images, images that I find really inspiring. Some of them are kind of cringy. Thomas has come over and I've been looking at him and he's like, oh, what is this? It is inherently deeply personal and motivating. You know, I find images of like Charlie Hunnam and Aragorn inspiring and like Michael Phelps training, you know, or like a dream car or a dream house. I've found that when you have visuals that you find compelling, it's easier to become emotionally charged about your goal. The second thing then is to decide what grinding looks like. Because in a game, it's very obvious. You click on the fishing spot in RuneScape, you start fishing, you wait for the fish to go away and then respawn and then you fish again. Grinding activities are very easy to understand in games. Often the goals of life are much more complex. And so it's hard to know what a grind activity looks like. But I would argue that life today has a sufficient amount of like key result areas, key work, that is like the perfect grind activity. It looks like a grind activity and you can internalize it as such. And with grinding, if you were to do one iteration of that activity, like fishing a single time in RuneScape, it takes like two minutes and it's really easy to do. But the same goes with grind activities in real life. Like for instance, working on a ticket for two minutes is like one iteration of a grind activity, I would say, in my real life. One iteration is really easy. It's that redundancy and the repetitiveness of it that makes it hard work. But what are your grind activities that line up with your goals with the most relevance? Here's a few examples that I came up with. When it comes to making money or making progress in your career, grinding pretty much comes down to two things, either focusing intently and specifically at a computer screen and doing something on a computer that is with intent or doing something in the field, as I would call it. So if you're like a plumber or something, you'd be going out and doing that activity out in the world. It's like more like tactile craftsman related activity. For us making YouTube videos, like typing and figuring out a script is focus work at a computer and then getting the B-roll or getting the shots or putting together a director series, figuring out the composition of something. I would call that focused work in the field. But either way, I'm either looking at a computer with intent 
and working on something specifically with intent, that's what the grind activity looks like, or just going with Thomas somewhere and figuring out a spot and then doing work in the field. With fitness, I think I would say the two biggest trackable grind activities are minutes spent exercising and amount of healthy meals consumed. Of course, like true fitness and all of the science behind fitness, it can become very complex and nuanced. You know, there's things like tracking calories, optimizing for your sleep, actually creating a routine that has progressive overload or whatever your goals are, optimizing for different things. But if you were to just reduce it down to a grind activity, I would say time spent exercising and like healthy meals eaten, that would probably cover like a bulk of it. Relationships, interpersonal activities, are definitely like the hardest of this. I tried coming up with the grind activities of this. It's like response worthy texts sent to someone as a way of leveling up relationships or meaningful hangs that were successfully accomplished. I will say the relationship category might be harder to gamify, but I do feel like you could probably come up with your own grind activities. But whatever your objective is, it's useful to know the grind activities involved and to define them. Then, very importantly, the third step is to have a way of tracking those grind activities and measuring the level ups. This is the hardest part because one of the ways that real life differs from an RPG game is that in life, you are never stationary. If I decide to mine in RuneScape and then decided I wanna take a break from mining, I'm never gonna level down in mining. Whereas in real life, if you stop exercising, you'll probably notice it just after a few days where you probably are starting to get weaker. You might not notice it in that small of a time frame, but you can't go too long without engaging in the grind activity in real life without starting to regress. Whereas in a game, like you're always gonna be level 70 fishing if you achieve that. To make the grind feel motivating in real life as it is in a video game, you have to define what different level ups and milestones look like. One thing that has been helpful for me in this regard is journaling. And a journal that I've started using, I haven't been using it long, but I really love the design of it and what's in there is the hero's journal. This is what it looks like. I mentioned this briefly in a recent video on my desk setup. It's got a few points on every page for your quests for the day, the things you're grateful for, and today's threats, the things that you need to avoid, and then just a little bit of space so that you can put notes in. And I like having this in front of me because journaling on the blank page, I find a little bit intimidating. I feel like what I write has to be perfect if I'm writing with pen and like in a nice journal. And then if a page gets messed up or something, like I don't feel like finishing out the journal. I don't know if I've ever fully finished out a journal that I bought, but this is like, it's just the right amount of structure and free writing space. And I get the sense that if I were to do a little bit of journaling every day, then it would be easier for me to reflect on the level ups that have happened because level ups in life are kind of under the surface. They happen without you noticing until like a year or two years have gone by and you look back and think to yourself, oh, the situation has gotten so much different. Like I have aggressively leveled up. If you can see the level ups by exercising some metacognition and thinking about them more specifically, it can serve as a powerful motivating force. I'm also gonna be using this journal to track the minutes I spent grinding, like minutes spent grinding or doing my grind activities. And this isn't like some big corporate brand. This journal was made by like a recent friend of mine who is also just passionate about <laughs> nerdy fantasy things and gamification. And so it's a company that I really wanna support and I'm a fan of. If you wanna check out this journal, The Hero's Journal and get 10% off of your purchase, you can go to my link in the description box and check them out. Thank you, Nick and The Hero's Journal for sponsoring this video. Thank you all for watching. I am personally tracking five different grind activities over the next few months and seeing if that's like a useful thing to do. For me, those are minutes spent exercising, minutes spent meditating, focus work at a computer, focus work in the field, most commonly like making videos, filming stuff. And then lastly, reaching out to friends. This one's harder to map, but like the amount of useful text phrases, connections that I've had with friends. The relationship one is harder to track, but that's the activity that I'm using with that. Month over month, I'll be seeing how many minutes I've managed to do with each of these things. And they're going to be my primary indicator of success for that month. Not the YouTube views or if my boss praised me at morning standup or you know if Thomas complimented me or something. No, the only metric is minutes spent on the grind activity and hopefully enjoying the grind activity. And then the last idea, it's a little more philosophical and high level. It's not really like a tactical move. And that is to exercise the bird's eye perspective pretty consistently, like periodically. And what is this? This is actually like a stoic exercise, but it also is inherently there whenever you're playing an RPG game, which is that you are looking at the character that is you, it's like a personification of you, but you're looking at it from far back, from a bird's eye view, and you're sort of looking at that character objectively. You're not 
immersed in the emotions and feelings and sensations of that character. So if you're lying in bed and scrolling your phone and enough inaction has gone by where you're starting to feel kind of bummed out about just laying in your bed and not doing anything with yourself, your reward to pain ratio is that there's some dopamine being delivered from the cell phone. It could be interesting to look at yourself from a bird's eye view. Like what if you were playing a video game and looking at yourself in that moment? In a video game, we would never let our character just like hang out and stare at a screen or like not partake in something because it would just be way too boring. And that's because we're removed from the physical sensation of that character. So maybe there is some physical reward with just laying down or eating junk food. But if you were playing a game of yourself, you would just not let that happen because you would just be focused on some objective. And if you got sick of the main quest, you'd start you know, collecting all the heart pieces, something to keep yourself busy and make the game interesting. And I think if you periodically exercise the bird's eye perspective, looking at yourself outside of yourself. It doesn't make hard work stop being hard work, but it helps you remove yourself from your emotions a little bit. And if you've read anything like by Eckhart Tolle or some other spirituality-based books, you know, one of the components of it that I do agree with is you shouldn't listen to every thought you have. Like not all of your thoughts are going to produce useful feedback. It sometimes is useful to try to look at yourself artificially maybe, from a more objective viewpoint, from a bird's eye view. And then you can just say, oh, I am here, I am body. Body is going to gym and working out. And I find that doing this, it's very helpful in getting myself to do the things that I actually wanna be doing. But these are the four kind of aspects of gamification that I'll be exercising over the next few months. I'd love to get your thoughts on this concept. And if you haven't ever enjoyed the thrills of grinding in an RPG game, you know, like give stick RPG a try. Go sell some cocaine. Greatness is coming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.